Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. In this video we're going to discuss linking and importing Excel spreadsheets to Access Databases. So the situation we're describing is you have an Excel spreadsheet that you want to utilize as a data source and you want to be able to use that in your Access Database. When you create, when you link a spreadsheet to an Access Database, to Access it looks like it has linked to an external table, a table in another database somewhere. All right. And you create an active link or an active connection, if you will, between the database and the spreadsheet. When you open that linked table in your database, it pulls for you a copy of what's in that spreadsheet at that moment in time. It does not, however, create such an active link that if you update the spreadsheet while the table is open, that you'll see those changes reflected. You'll have to close the table and reopen it to see the changes reflected. Now contrast that with importing a spreadsheet into a database. When you import a spreadsheet into a database, what you make is a copy of that data. You make a local copy of it in your database. And at that point going forward, there's no further connection between the Access Database and the spreadsheet. So if somebody modifies a row in the spreadsheet or adds a few rows to the spreadsheet, those changes will not be reflected in your local copy in the database. And reopening, closing, and reopening that that table, that link, that that imported table, will not change that. It will still reflect what you originally imported. So if you're going to import spreadsheets into databases, and you're expecting to change, you're going to come need to come up with a strategy to to update them every so often. So let's go over to the spreadsheet we're going to use as a data source. I made a very uh, small table here in a in a spreadsheet, and and actually I want to apologize. I inadvertently made a a, uh, a United States centric spreadsheet here. This is a, I'm calling it vendors. We have a vendor ID and a name and some address fields and I've got cities and states over here. I apologize to those who are not in the United States for that. Now, I am going to close this spreadsheet for the moment and open our database. And the first thing I want to discuss is linking, linking to the spreadsheet. So to do that we will go to the external data tab and we want to link to an Excel spreadsheet. So we'll click the Excel button. We want to choose the radio button for link to data source by creating a linked table and then we're going to press the browse button to go find our database. And I've got it in here and I'm calling it called it vendors. So all we do is click the open button here. Okay so we've got our file name there. We're, we're saying link and we're going to click OK. Now it's going to give us some choices. Our spreadsheet has three sheets in it. Only the first sheet is what we're interested in. That's the only one that has data in it. So we select our first sheet, click the next button. It's asking us if the first row of data is actually column headings. Now when I created the spreadsheet, I was careful to not put spaces in the column headings. The reason I did that is on the access side, if you're going to work with this table and have these as column names, uh, if you have spaces embedded in them, you have to put brackets around them, and uh, if you're going to write queries on them and whatnot, and this makes it easier not to have spaces in there, in my opinion. But we're going to click yes. The first row contains column headings. You can see now it turned that first row into column headings for us. We click next. It's going to ask us what name we want to appear in our table list in Access. And I'm going to say vendors linked because we're also going to oops. We're also going to create an imported version in a minute, and I want to be able to compare the two. So vendors linked, and we press finish. And it tells us it finished. So we can double click on our table, and we can see what was in our spreadsheet. All right. Now I'm going to, while this table is open in Access, I want to double click on my spreadsheet and try to open it. And we get a message here. That spreadsheet is locked for editing by another user. So you're going to have some contention issues when you link to a spreadsheet, as you can see. Right, I'm going to put, click Cancel. I don't want to bother opening it now. I'm going to close our linked copy of the table. Okay, so now I'm going to open up our spreadsheet. I'll slide it over here so we can see both table and spreadsheet at the same time. And what I want to do is I want to add a new row over here. I'm not going to be very creative as I'm doing this. I'm going to add a new row. And I'm even going to save it over here in the spreadsheet. 
come back over here to our database and go to the home press, press refresh it's not pulling in the new data we need to close and reopen this link table in order to get this refreshed copy of data All right. Now I'm going to close this table I'm going to delete that row from the spreadsheet save it and close it and see that fifth row is gone again Okay, now I want to contrast this to importing that same spreadsheet into another table so again on the external data tab we'll click Excel I'm going to browse to the same folder same spreadsheet this time I'm going to say import the data source now when we do this it's going to actually need to create a table for us because we don't have a table in here for it to put this data in right now we have the same choices we're going to use sheet one go to next again the first row contains column headings go to next now since it has to build a table for us it has a few more questions to ask us it's asking us about the values in this vendor ID row so we're going to leave, leave the, the field name the way it is it's suggesting a double data type now I don't need this to be a double data type in my example I'm intending these to be whole numbers so instead I'm going to choose long integer not knowing how big they might get and it's asking us about indexes are duplicates okay or are duplicates not okay or is it not indexed at all so here's where we have to decide what you want your primary key to be in your imported table do you trust whoever is building this spreadsheet to have always have unique values in this vendor ID and if you do you can say yes it's indexed and no don't allow duplicates and you can make the vendor ID be your primary key and if I were building this table from scratch and it were going to only reside in my database that's exactly what I would do but not trusting uh, whoever is building this, ta this table for us or this spreadsheet for us rather I'm going to choose yes it's indexed but duplicates are okay and watch what happens and we'll see what happens on the next screen but let's click through the rest of these the rest of these uh, we're going to leave as text 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 and that's fine and then none of those need to be indexed so the next next screen here and now it's asking us about the primary key had we chosen on the previous screen that the vendor ID was going to be unique we could say choose my own primary key and make the vendor ID our primary key I decided, decided to allow to allow duplicates in that column so I'm gonna say that access create a primary key for me and that's what it's doing over here on this left side an ID column over here I'm gonna click next and we get to name it and again this is the name that's going to show up over here in our navigation bar I'm gonna call it vendors imported and click finish now this it's asking you asking us do we want to save the steps we just created and I'm gonna say definitely yes and the reason why I want to say that is if we think that that spreadsheet is going to be updated in the future we might need to wipe out our copy of our, the, the, our local copy and re-import that, that spreadsheet to get the most updated data and if that's the case if we have these import steps saved it's extremely easy to rerun that import so I'm going to rename this though import vendors and I'm going to call it um, reload okay this is a, using this step here is in a situation where we would be replacing the entire table and I click save import all right so let's take a look at our table now this is a local copy of the spreadsheet it's it, it, it at this point it is not related to the spreadsheet anymore except that that's where the data came from we can do whatever we want to to that spreadsheet add rows change data they will not be reflected in here unless we completely reload this table or append to it and we're going to discuss appending it I'm going to close this copy of the table I'm going to say let's pull in more data from that spreadsheet let's pretend that that spreadsheet that we've been working with has additional new rows we want to add into this table let's browse to it very quickly so what I'm saying is the owner of that spreadsheet has, has created a new spreadsheet and, and, and that person is saying I've got four more rows, four new rows that you need to add to your table. You could, given a delta spreadsheet like that, 
append those rows to your table. So on our input import choice here, we'll choose append. And we're going to say append into vendors imported. That's our imported table. And we'll click OK. We have to go through the same setup that we went through before. Okay, now it knows about the first row being column headings. We'll click next. Import to tables, table, vendors imported. I don't care for it to analyze my table after importing. We'll click finish. Again, it's asking us to save the import steps. And I'm going to say yes. If you want to be able to rerun your, your append easily, and I would say yes, do that. And I'm going to change the name to import vendors append. And we'll save that. Oops. All right, now, take a look at what happened. I told it to append the contents of that spreadsheet. So it's added these four rows to the end of my spreadsheet. Now this wouldn't have worked had I set up vendor ID as a primary key. It actually would have protected us from bringing in these duplicate values. If I had set vendor ID as, as, a, as a, a primary key that does not allow duplicates. So that would be the disadvantage of doing what I making the choice I made here of, of having access create a, a different primary key for me. Now let's talk about updates to existing rows. Say your spreadsheet owner has decided that that, ad that address was, has been wrong for a long time. It's not 29 watch away, it's 293 watching away. All right? And they, they change this existing row in the spreadsheet. Now you open up your linked version and it pulls in the current data because it's got an active link. It can it goes and looks at that spreadsheet before it displays this data. And it's got the new data, the new ad address. But your imported version, it still has the old address because this is a local copy that has no relationship to that spreadsheet. So if we want to pick up that new address in our local copy of the spreadsheet, our imported table, we need to rerun that complete import. The way we get to those is our external data tab and the saved imports button. So this is the import we built for reloading or pulling in the entire spreadsheet into the table again. So we select it, we click run. It's warning us that when it runs us, it's going to overwrite all the data that's in that table. We're going to click yes and let it run. And then open our table and you can see that we're back to the four original rows that are in this spreadsheet. Right? But it's pulled in the new it's pulled in the new address, the 293 address, which is good. We could just as easily close this and rerun our import vendors append. If we do that, it's going to add those four same rows a second time, which is not what we really want, but we'll do it just to show it. Alright, now we've got the four additional rows, the rows repeated. So I hope that I've adequately explained the difference between linking and importing spreadsheets into Access Databases. Hope you got something out of this, and we will see you next time. Thanks.